Well, good morning. Welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy, and I'm very excited to be with you this morning as we take a look at um, another chapter of uh, John, uh, I'm sorry, Max Lucado's book, Traveling Light. Today we are in chapter 16. And chapter 16 has been titled Jam Session, The Burden of Envy. And we're looking specifically at the part of Psalm 23 that says, My cup runneth over. I was thinking about uh, so many different things as I read through this chapter, as I'm, I'm sure you were as well. Um, but I have to admit, um, what probably struck me the hardest, um, or at least what um, resounded with how I was feeling about the idea of envy was at the very end of the, the chapter. It says uh, at the very bottom of page 138, Max Licato says, one thing is certain when the final storm comes and you are safe in your father's house, you won't regret what he didn't give you. You'll be stunned at what he did what he did give you. When the final moment comes, you're, you're, you're safe and warm in the Father's house, um, you won't really be thinking about what you didn't have. It's interesting to me. Um, I think there are four key words that we should discuss today as we think about this idea of envy, um, being envious of other people's things, um, having a desire for things that people have that you don't have. Um, the four key words that I'd like to look at today are contentment, need, abundance, and lack. And if you still have your, uh, your suitcase sheets, we haven't done too much with them recently, but I'm wondering if you would uh, possibly take out those sheets and right inside of that suitcase, I'm going to do it right now so you can see what I mean. I would encourage you to divide that suitcase, if you can, into four quadrants, okay? And then one of them you'll want to title abundance, the other one need contentment, and then finally, lack. <clears throat> so here's how I envisioned it. Abundance, need, contentment, and lack. And the reason for these four sort of quadrants is that I want you, as we think about each of these words, to maybe jot down a couple of uh, thoughts that come to your mind as I talk about each of these words. And then later on during this week, that'd be a great place for you to go back to and, and spend some time in prayer with God as he helps you better understand uh, truly need, uh, desire, want, envy. Um, I hope that this will be a very fruitful exercise for us because frankly, at the end of the day, no one ever really wants to talk about contentment or discontentment, uh, lacking, uh, having need or, or wants and desires because we want what we want, right? We want what we want. And we don't want people telling us that we shouldn't want those things or we shouldn't um, try to get those things or, or seek out those things. We want what we want, right? So I'm going to start today with the word need, need. So obviously a need is, is, is a need. It's something that is an absolute necessity for you to continue to exist. So when I think about the list of things that I truly need, right? I need oxygen. I need water. I need food. I need heat, warmth. Um, I need protection from the elements of the world, whether that be violence or uh, the weather, nature, um, the sun, those kinds of things. Uh, but I need some kind of protection, a shelter, if you will. Um, but when I start to really think about that word need, uh, I recognize that the list is fairly small. I mean, as long as I'm nourished, 
my body can continue to function. As long as I've got water, my body can continue to function. Uh, as long as I've got oxygen, my body will continue to function. Um, as long as I have some sort of protection from the things that will harm me, right? Like um, uh, excessive amounts of sun um, or excessive cold, high heat, um, rain, snow, those kinds of things. As long as I'm protected from them, I'm, I'm probably going to be okay. If you were to imagine yourself being out in the middle of the woods, right, and all of a sudden you were you were lost and, and you were sort of stranded in the middle of the woods, you couldn't get out, well, what are the things that you would spend your time trying to procure? Food, water, and shelter, right? Those three things, you can, you can survive. You can succeed. Now, are there other things that you would want? Oh, for sure. I have to imagine in the midst of that time, there are people who would want, you know, a, a nice hot cup of coffee or an ice cream sundae, or um, a nice soft bed to sleep on, or a, a really warm blanket to, uh, to, to, to wrap up in. I mean, there's lots of things we would want, but when it comes to the true idea of need, as long as I'm fed, as long as I have water, as long as I have some place to be protected from things that are gonna harm me, I will, I will survive, I will thrive. So I think we, when we think about envy, the first thing we have to do is we really have to start to think about need. We have to adjust our understanding of what a need is. When I think about um, the ways that I hear the word need used in our world, um, I remember uh, being uh, probably my third year in college. Um, I had almost no money to my name. I had uh, borrowed my way through uh, the first two years of my school. I could begin to see the student debt kind of racking up. Um, every time I turned around, I was on my last dollar. Um, I could never kind of seem to get ahead. It, it was a really difficult time. And I walked into uh, a particular class. It, as it turns out, it was a, an art class. It was one of these uh, elective classes that, you know, I, I had to take something from this category. And so there were things like photography and artwork and, you know, other kinds of things. And so I, I chose sort of a basic level art class. I sat down in the class and the teacher says to me, uh, we're going to first go over a list of things that you're going to need for this, con this, this class. All right, fine. So, you know, it, she hands out a piece of paper. And on the piece of paper is like 10 or 15 things that we had to go and purchase in order to take this class, including expensive uh, sort of like um, oil crayons and some paints and some other kinds of things that we were going to need to have for this class. And as this poor college student, I looked at this thing and I looked at the teacher and I said, I can't take this class. I don't need those things. I, I don't have the money for them. I'm never, ever going to use them again. I don't need, these are not needs for me. Um, I think we sometimes, when we're, when we're really struggling with contentment, which we're going to talk about next, we really have to go to that need place and say, if, if I had zero resources left, would I spend what I do have left on that thing? Is it truly a need? Is it going to keep me going? So, so that's how I see need. The, the contentment word, what I put in that contentment category is the things that satisfy me, right? So the Lord does talk about being our satisfaction. And I think there's a lot of different ways that the Lord satisfies us, okay? He, he brings us, David says, into green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. So there are great ways that he gives us contentment. But in our world today, we think about the word contentment and we think, I have everything I need. Right, I'm fully satisfied. Um, and so maybe we say, you know, I've got a house, I've got a car, my house is warm or it's cold, cool in the summertime. Um, I have, um, you know, children, I have a family, I have a wife, I have a, a husband, I have, you know, all these different things that cause us to be satisfied. But when I really look at Psalm 23, David makes it clear what God gives us to satisfy, to truly satisfy us. And there's only two things. At the very end of the psalm, right, David says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Contentment is bound up. I, I would love for you to maybe write this down or, or put it on a post-it note and put it on your mirror this week or something. Contentment 
is bound up in goodness and mercy. Contentment isn't bound up in an amount of money or a number of things or a place of prestige or anything else that the world suggests. Was our contentment is truly bound up in God's goodness towards us and his mercy. Now, in God's goodness, does he sometimes give us money or, or income or something? Yes, yes, he absolutely does. In God's goodness, does he sometimes give us things? Yes, indeed he does. Um, in his mercy, does he sometimes uh, allow us to, um, you know, enjoy pleasure? Maybe uh, some we were, we were able to go on a vacation that most people wouldn't be able to afford, or we could go to go to China and see the Great Wall and that kind of things. Yes, absolutely. God does provide opportunities for us such as that, and that is in his goodness and mercy. But at the very base and core of goodness and mercy, right, is God's love for us, his protection and provision for us. And that links directly back to need, right? God is going to give us the things we absolutely need in order so that we can survive and thrive and grow. So let's not think of contentment as I made it. I got the things I wanted in life and now I'm satisfied. Let's think of contentment as God has really poured out his goodness and mercy on me. And that's amazing for me. So as we thought about need and contentment, then let's talk about lack, right? Lacking. Um, no one wants to be in a place of lacking. Nobody likes to lack anything. Um, and David, several times in the Psalms, when he's talking about God's goodness and God's love for him, he says, no good thing do I lack. He, has, he, he feels as though he has everything he needs because God is good to him and God loves him and God has mercy and grace for him. I think when we think about lacking here on earth, right, we, we immediately look at our checking accounts. We immediately look at, um, you know, our, our homes uh, and, and maybe the things that need to be fixed in our homes or, or the things that we wish were different. We look at our jobs and we, we wish that we had more authority or we had, you know, we had uh, a better job or uh, something else. You know, we look at all these other things and we go, man, I really, I really need more of that. I need more of this. I need how many times have you watched a, a movie, um, especially like a, a, a romance movie or ro a romantic comedy kind of movie, right? And between the the the, the two lovers is always a. Uh, it seems like there's always a conversation about. Well, you, you need to tell me what you need from me, right? Well, the Lord, right? God, in our in a conversation with us, we we don't really need to tell him exactly what we need. He knows our need. That's what the Word tells us. He knows our need. He, he does want us to come to him and, 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 and ascribe to him, uh, Father, I know that you can provide for me these things and, I, and I, have a, I, have a, I feel a need for them. But what did Jesus do when he was in a moment of need, right? He went to the Lord and he said, listen, Father, uh, if it would be consistent with your will, my need is that I wish you would take the cup of suffering away from me, that I wouldn't have to go and hang on the cross. But but he frames that whole question, that whole desire and need within God's will, the context of God's will. He says, but if that doesn't meet with your will, then Father, bring me to the cross. Lead me where you need me to go. How many times when we have felt lack over something and we've gone to God and said, God, I really need this thing. Have we said, Father, if it fits with your will, if it fits with your will, will you give me this? Will you, will you provide this for my family? And if not, Father, will you show me how I can fit better into your will for me without this? That's a whole different understanding of lack. The fourth word then is abundance, right? And I saved it for last because it's the one everybody wants to talk about. We all want to be in a place of abundance. If I go back to Max Licato's um, chapter, right? At the very bottom of page 138 again, he says, One thing is certain, when the final storm comes and you're safe in your father's house, you won't regret what he didn't give you. You'll be stunned at what he did give you. You'll be stunned at what he did give you. I I know. I was going to say I think. I know. I believe. I know that when Christ comes, when we are all gathered together with him forever when we are living with him for all of eternity, when we are reigning with him as a kingdom of priests, uh, as the word tells us, man, we're going to look at 
everything. We're going to look at everything with just an entirely different knowledge, right? Paul says we know now in part, then we will know fully. We're going to have a, this new knowledge. And when we look back, we're going to go, whoa, look at all the stuff. Look at all the things. Look at all the people. Look at all the, the life, the, the love, the grace, the mercy, the everything. Look at everything God gave to me. What an abundance. And that leaves us right where David is, right in the psalm, when he says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And then he describes the abundance of that. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What is the abundance of God? His goodness, his mercy, and the promise, the truth, that we will dwell with him forever. That is abundance. Jesus said, I have come so that you would know life and you would know it abundantly. How can we know abundant life? Well, we'll know it when we're together with him. I don't know that on this side of, uh, of, of, of heaven, we will ever fully be able to understand and know, be content with the abundance that God has given us here. But when we're together with him forever, we will know that abundance in an amazing, powerful way. So I'd love for you to think about those four words this week, need, contentment, lack, and abundance. I'd love for you to remember that contentment is bound up in God's goodness and mercy towards us. I think this can really change our perspective on life, our situation, where we, where we find ourselves right now. Uh, in fact, I think understanding, right, this idea of God's goodness and mercy leads us to contentment. That leads us, David, David said it led him by the, the still waters where his soul was restored. Why? Because he was content with God. So I hope that can happen for you this week too. Um, I hope you have just an amazing week. And uh, I, I thank you for being with me again this morning. I look forward to meeting with you next week as we look at chapter 17. Have a great week, everybody.